everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Vlogmas Day 11. Yeah, I think today's video will be a little bit longer um, because I have actually planned out three things in this video. First of all, our usual uh, advent calendar opening. I will try to get this through a little bit faster than me always blowing and chatting in between. The second thing is just we had some crazy Star Wars announcements like just some uh, hours ago like over the night and I woke up to them now like I'm not a Star Wars whatever channel but I just want to talk about them a little bit just just say what what we what was announced um, and then I will have my first top 10 video for today and um, will be my top 10 uh, of my generation 1 My Little Ponies. So if you're just here for that or you're watching this video like way after like December 2020 and you're just like oh what are her favorite ponies then um, please just skip to that time and um, yeah let's start getting into the advent calendar opening at first. So. Let's open up the Disney pin advent calendar and we're on day 11. There it is. Okay. Not in a bag. Not a soda can, I can feel that. What is it? Something round. <laughs> okay. Okay, a little bit matching a little bit appropriate because it's a Star Wars uh, Zoom Zoom pin. Not one that I would have wanted to have because if I wouldn't know that this is from Star Wars Zoom Zoom mystery pack then I probably would have like completely would be completely clueless to what this is. This is um, oh my goodness this is an Imperial Guard like em like Emperor Palpatine's red guards. Yeah, that, that, that's basically it. They have like these huge red helmets and then these huge cloaks that are also red. So that's what they are. They are the guards of Palpatine. So at least it's a little bit uh, like matching that we have a Star Wars pin for today. Because I'm mean, just like, I, I opened YouTube and it was like, what happened? Like everything, this, this, and this, and here says a real, and here whole announcements. Like, okay, but let's just uh, do the second calendar opening, advent calendar 11. Ooh. It's something different that we uh, did not have yet in the calendar. And it's an LPS. It's a newer LPS, so definitely not vintage, and probably also not from the like, um, like second or whatever series that that came out like in the 2000s. So probably this is one that's more new. I don't know. It, it's a, it's a cat, right? It's, it's a kitty. And the more I found them at flea markets the more I got into collecting them. It's really not that I have like a huge attachment to them or that I, I don't know, that I am really into like the history of them or it's just, they are cute, they are small and you find them very often at flea markets for very cheap prices. So I tend to not buy them when they are like higher priced than one or two euro maybe. Two euro is very like when I really just want to find one that's so cute I really want to have it otherwise I'm going for 50 cents or one euro for them so that's like I know they were not not, not cheap when they uh, like came out but it's like you find them so often but I have a quite quite a huge collection uh, already this year so yeah <laughs> okay so if you're not interested in Star Wars like at all, just skip this part now and skip to my My Little Pony um, video this time. And but I just I can't can't not talk about this like 
This morning I was just like, I'm always like opening up, for example, YouTube is probably the first thing I open up and I follow several like YouTube channels who like just are like talking about Star Wars and obviously I also follow the main Star Wars YouTube channel. I was like, what are these scissor reels? What is this? There was a big announcement by Kathleen Kennedy, like official, completely official about uh, all the new projects going on at Lucasfilm. So not just Star Wars, there was also an announcement uh, about the Indiana, Indiana Jones movie and the Willow series, I guess and something else that I have no idea what that is, something with bones and I don't know, but most of it was Star Wars. So it was like, okay, most often we get like announcements like, yeah, there will be a movie and this, and there will be like another movie, but this was really series, 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 live action, animated, ba, 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 movie, ba, 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 so many things. <laughs> I, I just like, oof. Um, there will be a live action Ahsoka series with the same actor as that we saw in The Mandalorian. <sighs> Obviously, The Mandalorian gets also another season and another live action series called Rangers of the New Republic. And all of these three series, like the plot will take around the same time and then they will like mesh into like one big event at the end. Sounds super interesting. Um, Obviously, the Ahsoka series, probably we will get to see Grand Admiral Thrawn because we get the name drop already in the Mandalorian. Probably like Sabine, things like Ahsoka searching for Ezra. That's what I guess, like no ideas, but that's probably what it is. The Mandalorian, we know what the Mandalorian series is about and that both like during the same time. And then this Rangers of the New Republic thing is just what I guess, like we have seen some New Republic pilots in the last um, seasons of the Mandalorian and, and for example, um, yeah, I guess they are like recruiting people in the Outer Rim to join the New Republic, stuff like what we saw with Cara Dune. Um, maybe this series is with, uh, starring like Cara Dune then, but we don't know, like it's just what, my, my guess that we see more New Republic things, pilots, recruiting people, I don't know, whatever. Rangers of the New Republic. <laughs> At least the title is a little bit interesting other than Ahsoka or <laughs> Andor. There are obviously also things like announced that we already knew would be coming, like Andor, the show about Cassian Andor, one of the main characters of Rogue One. So now we have the title, Andor. <laughs> Anyways, the title, I mean, it's just a title. Super interesting um, during the time, like before Rogue One, before A New Hope, all about the like, um, like dirty side of the uh, rebellion. Super interesting. Can't wait for that. And obviously, what we also already knew, the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Also, of course, live action. And we now know that the title is surprise. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> but it's, as I said, it's just the title. So it's easy to know what it is about. It's about Obi Wan Kenobi. Starring Ewan McGregor, which we already knew, and starring Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader. Uh, okay, we get to see these two like play together in in Star Wars again. Like, I don't know how much Hayden Christensen will be in it, but he will be in it. It was announced. So. <laughs> then something else that we already knew we would get. Um, the first like animated thing like here on my list, the Bad Batch series. When that was announced, I was like, is that so interesting? Like the Bad Batch following up the events of the Clone Wars, like the Bad Batch, those characters were introduced in the last, uh, the Clone Wars um, season. And but I guess it's an interesting time for clones or special clones in this, in this case. Um, um, during the time when the Empire was just founded, like, what's happening to them? Will they transit to, to Stormtroopers or will they just be faded out or will they go on their own thing? Um, we also got like a real trailer for that already, so this is kind of coming soon, I hope next year already. Um, it would be great, the trailer was really action oriented and not so much of Plot, so but but it looked cool and it exactly looked like the Clone Wars series so the style is like continuing on that's 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 good 
yeah, then something else animated, what was announced, which is like, for me it's like the oddball, like, what, 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 what is this going to be? It's called Visions, and Visions is said to be an animatrix style anime, oh my goodness, anime series, more like an anthology series um, of short films. Like, I just had to look up how Animatrix <laughs> looked. It really looks like an anime. So it will be anime style. And it will be 10 short movies. It's like, it's an anthology series. So not really, um, not really uh, following the, the plot, da, 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 but separate plots of different timelines, probably different characters. 10 of these short movies done by the 10 most, like, best uh, well-known anime studios of Japan. So it is really then an anime. It will be anime short movies. I mean, all done for Disney Plus, obviously. And I mean, that's like, I can't even imagine how that will be. Either it is super cool, like I was huge into anime, or I find it like, mm, because I'm actually not that much into anime anymore. Let's see. We will also get a Lando Calrissian series. I don't know, do we have the name yet? Lando Calrissian? Probably. <laughs> don't even remember. It will be... We don't know much about that. We don't even know if we'll be starring uh, Donald Glover or Billy Dee Williams or both. Uh, I don't know, it could be the young Lando, it could be the old Lando, it could be like the old Lando talking about his adventures, like like the Calrissian Chronicles or what? Like, no idea. We also don't know like the timelines of all of that, but there is a Lando Calrissian series in the works. Then there's something that I don't really know how to put it, but it's called The Acolyte and it's a mystery thriller. I don't even remember if this was said to be a series as well or a short or a movie. I mean, it could also be a movie. I mean, it's for Disney Plus for sure. Could also be a movie then, but I think it's also a series. Um, like mystery thriller during the last days of the High Republic. High Republic is a time which we haven't discovered in Star Wars like at all yet. It's before the prequels. And um, there will be books and comics coming out really soon. That was announced like way back last year and was also shifted, I think, even like this month, like next week or something, they come out. Or it's like in January, I don't remember, like a lot of books about the High Republic era. And then we get this series, The Acolyte, of like during the High Republic era. So. Um, then something else animated, it's called Droids, it's a movie for Disney Plus, which is like Lucasfilm animation coming together with uh, Industrial Light and Magic, so the special effects studio that does like all the big movies, not only Star Wars, also other movies, they come together and make this animated movie about droids, about R2 and, and 3PO and another main character, like I don't know, probably also a droid, no idea when that will take place. Could take place during any time because R2 and, and, and 3PO are during like all of the main um, like trilogies so sequels, prequels, origin trilogy, who knows? Probably more sequels, right? I don't know, who knows? And then the big two movies that like one of them we already kind of knew that we would get a movie directed by Taika Waititi. By Taika Waititi? I'm sorry, that's like I really like him, like his movies are like crazy, like Thor Ragnarok for example, like okay, but we still don't know the title or when it will be done, like when, when we will get this movie, but the other movie that was announced now will be actually the next movie for, I guess, for cinema, <laughs> yes, we will get it, um, at least what I said, uh, Christmas 2023, and that will be called Rogue Squadron. So it will be a fighter pilot movie about X-Wing fighters like Rogue, Rogue Squadron is already known, like there were books and they are actually the, the squadron founded by Luke Skywalker. So I don't know during what time that will be, but like it will be like the first main big Star Wars movie directed by a woman. I honestly forgot the name of the of the director, but she, it will be a very personal story for her as, as far as I like what I, what I read and, and, and heard that her father was Rick in the real world a fighter pilot 
and he died like during I don't know during when he served and uh, she always wanted to make a big fighter pilot movie and now she could combine it with Star Wars and makes this movie like I'm here for it it's something different probably no Jedi in that movie and stuff so I don't even know I think that was it Ahsoka Mandalorian Rangers of the New Republic Andor Obi-Wan Kenobi The Bad Batch Visions This anime thing Lando Calrissian The Acolyte Droids The movie by Taita Waititi and Rogue Squadron movie <laughs> I hope that this is all set kind of during the future, not too near, because we are still in this whole pandemic situation in the world and I hope that they can go full on like production again when this hopefully sorts out during the next year or next years so that they don't have to push all those cool things which are in production back and back and back. Postpone it, postpone it, postpone it. I'd rather um, would like them to have it planned already, kind of in the, in the future. So, but we have names, we have we have titles, we know what they're working on. That's amazing. Okay, I, I needed to talk to someone <laughs> because um, I don't have many Star Wars fans like in my like near surroundings. So it's like at least I can talk to. The camera <laughs> or you or maybe someone of you is interested in that but let's strap in for the next toy related video which comes up in a second my little pony generation one top 10 everyone. yeah welcome to my top 10 of my generation one my little ponies i wanted to do a top 10 video for kind of a long time and i never did it so i thought for vlogmas Let's do it. Um, I will just include ponies that I have in my collection, so I'm not putting any like grails on the list that I might never be able to achieve or that I don't have yet. So just physical ponies that I can show you. And also it's really, as I said, just the generation one My Little Ponies. I'm not including any generation two, three or four. Um, ponies although I'm also collecting these but the generation one is the generation of my little pony that I grew up with um, I didn't have so many as a child I had maybe around 10 and I also tried to mix up this a little bit between that I not just show you like my two favorite sets or something because I could also fill up this list with I don't know these four ponies of this specific set and then these four ponies of this specific set and then there wouldn't be much else so I'm trying to just always um, include then one of these ponies of for example a set of four ponies then I have to choose like let's pick this one so I have a little bit more of a variety in this video and I'm not just showing you like for example this specific set of ponies then the list would be full very easy and I'm also trying to mix it up between ponies that I have more of a like sentimental um, yeah, collect, collection connection to because they were my childhood ponies and ponies that I just put in because of like aesthetic reasons. <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's start with my um, spot number 10. And I'm already starting with cheating because I'm not putting in one pony but two because I like for me they are just like equally important it's these two uh, Snuzzle and Butterscotch from the original set of the first six My Little Ponies from 1982 these are very special to me because they are the only flat feet ponies that I have so they are different than for example any of the other ponies that have this hole here they are completely flat and that makes it easy to identify that these are really from the original first set there are not any like mail orders that came out later or that were released in different sets or anything these are original original not sold in um, Germany for example because I'm from Germany actually my friend 
got them for me when she was in Japan, which is even more strange. They were also not sold in Japan, but I guess there are definitely collectors in Japan for like um, Western toys. Because Japan actually had a different set of My Little Ponies. They had uh, the Takara Ponies. They look completely different. Anyways, she found them in a thrift store or it was more like a actually a used second-hand clothing store but also with some accessories and, and some toys obviously um, because there were I don't know there were quite a lot of My Little Ponies <laughs> and she called me you know for her it was like uh, early in the evening for me I was sitting at my breakfast table and she was like hey we had like a um, video chat here are my little ponies are you interested in any of them and then we had like she showed me the ponies oh yeah this one show me the oh no this one has has a little bit of a cut mane or no this one is missing whatever blah 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 <laughs> and then we settled for these two because when i, I asked her please please show me um the hooves yes <laughs> because flat feet ponies are actually not that common over here in europe because they were just released in America I guess just um, in the very first year so having those is really special to me and as I got them at the same time and they are from the same set I love the collector's post ponies but these are the only ones that I have that are like super the very from the very first ones I couldn't decide Snuzzle or butterscotch so both of them Number two on my list is stripes. I uh, acquired stripes pretty um, recently. I got her for my birthday. I mean, I bought her myself, but um, and ever since I have her, ever since I did her hair, I have a video about that. I will link it down below how I did her hair. Um, I really fell in love with her. She is a pony from the Rainbow Curl ponies. That's that's really appropriate. She has this beautiful rainbow here and rainbow hair. I mean, not completely like rainbow, every different um, pastel color here that we have. And what's actually special is that when my mom saw her, or well, she's not really into that, that I am a toy collector and all that stuff, but she was like, well, didn't you have her as a child? And I'm like, maybe? <laughs> Actually, I thought I could remember all of my childhood ponies, but maybe she is right, because it, it, with, with the rainbow curl ponies, it sparks something, some memory. Maybe she might have been my childhood pony after all. Anyways, I love the whole set, and I could have included the whole set on the list, Let's just quickly show them again here. Uh, but when it came uh, to the decision, which one of those do I pick for the favorite that I put into my top 10 list, it was pretty clear that I would choose stripes. I mean, yeah, pretty obvious. She's the pink pony. I love pink and rosy colors, so. And, and maybe she even was my childhood pony. She's my favorite. She is in my favorite pony pose, the um, posy pose. So that's my favorite pony pose of all time because it's, I prefer the straight pony poses um, better definitely than these like tilted ones that are like leaning to one side because you can definitely display them better. And it's, it's, it's just perfection like this pony. I had to include her on my list. Um, I could have gone with all of these. <laughs> like, how could you not fall in love with them? I definitely have to work on her hair. Yeah, so I definitely have to re-hair re re this girl. But let's just put them aside because I don't want to cheat and put <laughs> all the ponies of the same set on a list. So number nine is stripes okay let's keep
keep it going with number eight. Ten, nine, eight. I needed to include honeysuckle. Honeysuckle is a flutter pony and of course I love flutter ponies in general. They are kind of a little bit special. They are bigger than um, the baby ponies. They are not as big as the adult ponies or as the um, sweetheart sisters or something. They are in between. They are really fragile looking and have that long hair. But the special thing about her is that she has her original flutter wings. I found her on eBay some years ago actually for a very good price, like 12 euro, including the wings and I'm like 100% sure that these are legitimate vintage old uh, flutter wings and not reproduction wings because um, well, the seller wasn't really a pony seller. It was just some ordinary seller who had some, some clothes and some toys so it didn't look like I uh, would have spent money on putting reproduction wings in her. And well, she might not be my favorite from the pony, from the flutter ponies concerning like her design or something because I think there are more colors that are more popping. Some, some have neon hair like Morning Glory for example and others. And also her hair is faded to white. It would have actually been pink. So that's one of the good examples of fading pink hair, completely fading to white. I think it still looks beautiful. And she was also my, uh, my first flutter pony and then with the original wings and I can like detach them and attach them to other flutter ponies if I want to make photos. So that's like perfect. Also there is a tiny little um, like um, crack also in the wing already. So definitely original flutter wings. I'm super happy to have honeysuckle. Definitely my number eight spot on the list. Another pink pony. I know, I'm so... I didn't choose them for the color, obviously, but I needed to include glittering, glittering Gem here. Glittering Gem is a princess brush and grow, so she has the very long hair and mane and um, obviously the tail can grow. So she works. And still she has the, the uh, special glittery on the glittery but um, tinselly hair that the princess ponies had and she has a gem here. So overall the design is like beautiful and then for me with the color combinations she is like my kind of little Rapunzel you could say. Uh, Rapunzel is like the pony that's most expensive, most thought after, came out very la late in the in the line as a, a mail order only, so she can go for thousands of euros. So I will never be able to have her. Although she is such a pretty pony, also pink body, also very long hair, Rapunzel, and glittering gem kind of looks like her. She has a similar pink body. She has similar hair colors with um, like blonde, so yellow pink and, um, and tinsel. So overall she like is my small, my little Rapunzel you could say because I love that color combination so much. Glittering gem as uh, the whole set of the um, Princess Brush and Rose is beautiful, beautiful. Um, but I only included one because at this moment here I only have one here. I have ordered some. So uh, in one of my next unboxings you will see more, um, but for now, and she will still be my favorite. So number seven. Okay, number six goes to the only boy <laughs> here. Um, it's Tex. I have to say I really really love the Big Brother ponies, so all the ponies that have uh, the other 
uh, molds that um, are meant to be male ponies. So they have these uh, like Clydesdale uh, hooves and overall their bodies are more like a little bit bigger, a little bit more bulky, but still these so cute faces. And Tex is just my favorite because this color combination of a super soft yellow and with pink and then he's a cowboy, he would actually have a cowboy hat. I really like this, this cowboy theme going on. Um, I definitely hope to get his cowboy hat one day, maybe also his handkerchief. Mm. He is like my favorite of all of the boy ponies that I have, so needed to be on this list. Thanks. Okay, let's keep it going for the next pony on the list, which is number five. We are halfway through. It's the birthday pony. I think I've never showed this at my channel before because I um, got her when I wasn't really doing like toy related videos here. Um, and I wasn't even doing much of YouTube at that point. Anyways, this pony is really, really precious to me for like different reasons. A, she's beautiful. Like she's very special. She was the um, released as uh, for the 10th anniversary of the first My Little Pony line, so 1992. So she would have been out when I was collecting or when I was playing with My Little Pony as a child. I didn't have her. But ever since I got into collecting again, I I really loved her look since she, she really looks like a birthday party. She has all of these ribbons and stars and and she has tinsel hair, which is not my favorite, but and she is has this really really cute face, gingerbread pose. I love the gingerbread pose. Um, you know, mine has a little bit cut hair, and actually she was supposed to have these um, like typical um, birthday present ribbons in her tail, and I don't know, I think just in her tail. But I'm not complaining. I found her for one euro. <laughs> at a convention. Actually it was Comic Con Berlin last September. Was it last September 2019? Um, I would never have thought to run uh, into her like in the wild. I mean convention is not directly out in the wild but it's not that she was presented beautifully there and I could get her for I don't know 20, 30 euro or something because she is actually even right now she is going for Quite a bit more because she's she's not really a common pony she's not the most rare or the most thought after but she was going for definitely more than a euro i picked her out of a huge box of different toys different other ponies i think i picked out two more generation one ponies and i think three or so generation four ponies also other toys uh, for example this um, my, my mr and mrs potato hat from a toy story collection or from this vendor and all dirt cheap and I couldn't believe how happy I am to have the birthday pony. She really doesn't have another name, she's just called the birthday pony. So she needed to be on my list. Number four. Lemon treats. This is another one of, of, of these uh, pony sets actually where I actually would like to include the whole set. <laughs> she is belonging to the Kenny Kane ponies. Uh, I don't have the complete set but I have four of the set so far. Hoping to complete it one day and I just was like who do I pick out? Uh, and, and then I went for lemon treats because she's actually the pony of this set that's um, the rarest and most difficult to get and most often like most expensive um, because she actually wasn't released uh, in Germany or in Europe I think in general I think she was just released in the US because in the US the candy cane pony set uh, consisted of six ponies and over here it just consisted of four ponies so she's pretty hard to get and I was like incredibly lucky um, I just uh, found out about the set 
saw like um, the original artwork from the back cards somewhere online and I was like, oh, they look so cute. Um, let me show you some others. And we've got molasses, we've got caramel crunch, and sweet sugar, or sugar sweet, always mix it up. And they all have these super nice curly hair with always like white and one other color, so they look like candy canes. <laughs> this one especially, Caramel Crunch. And they were scented ponies. I think some of them still smell a little bit sweet. So, and anyways, when I saw the back card, I was like, oh, what's this yellow pony? I've never seen that. I mean, no wonder I've never seen that because it's one of the rarest of the sets. So, um, but then like a week later or something, I ran into her on eBay for a good price for 20 euro, which is about the price that I'm going for. Well, then I just had her, although I would like a week later, a week earlier, I thought like, okay, that's, that's one that I will probably never ask. But then I found her, so that's why she's probably my favorite from the set. I also love her fresh colors. This, I love yellow ponies. Um, I haven't included so many, <laughs> but yellow is, is a really great pony color and then with this fresh green, which is not a very common color for ponies and pony hair in general, so, um, yes. <laughs> okay, the next one on my list is yeah, again, I'm cheating. I'm also showing you like the whole pony set. So, goes to Pina Colada. And actually the whole tropical pony set in general. I have showed you this set multiple times. They are so bright, neon, colorful, cute because their theme is like, you know, tropical, tropical islands. And Pina Colada is by far like I think my favorite from the set because her color is oh my goodness it's so pink it's neon pink and she's got these super cute um, palm trees on her flank like her symbols are palm trees and sand and this whole islands summer tropical theme is like I, I love that so these ponies needed to be on the list but I think could not include all of them, so then I picked out Pina Colada. And now I'm cheating again because now I'm really showing you more ponies than one because I can't decide. Actually, it's all of the pony friends that I have. So I, I, I couldn't decide. Do I pick Creamsicle or, or, or do I pick Wooly or um, I don't know, Hoppy? These are ponies that are actually not ponies because they are other animals but they are belonging into the My Little Pony line. Some of them were released and like for example these three in a separate set also with others so this set is not complete there are way more than I would like to have um, and for example these smaller ones here where we release them together with a baby pony so baby pony and pretty pulse these belong to so this is Wooly and actually probably I would have picked Wooly um, because Wooly was one of my childhood ones um, not this one because I don't have any of my childhood ponies anymore um, but then again, I love this. I love them all so much that I just, just could decide which ones to pick. So, um, actually, if I would have another one that is actually my grail pony, pony of all time, then I would have picked this one, but I don't have it. Like, I would love to have Cutie Soros. Cutie Soros is like. It's perfect for me, it's a dinosaur and, and my little pony both together with neon hair with the orange body color. Could it be more perfect for me? Actually, 
No, then I would have picked Cutisaurus, obviously. But as I don't have Cutisaurus, I have to put them all on the list. So this is my huge pile of number two. One spot left right here which pony will it be which pony will it be at first I want to give out a, like a shout out or whatever to some honorable mentions because there were so many more that I wanted to put on the list and maybe you've noticed that I have not um, like uh, chosen any baby ponies <sighs> there were some that I wanted to include so I was uh, really almost including this little um, because I had found it at the flea market and these um, like newborn baby ponies they are so small and squishy and cute and baby Wiggles is like a, a unicorn as well so oh my goodness like so damn cute but then again I was like which which one of the others do I like exclude then because uh, no so I chose to not put any baby ponies in this Maybe I do uh, a follow-up with just top 5 or something, or top 10 of baby ponies. Um, and second reason is also because actually I always prefer the adult ponies more than the baby ponies. Um, so this one was like so on my list, so on my maybe list. Um, I almost also included some of the babies that are the baby ballerinas and definitely the sweetheart sisters. I really wanted to include one of them. Oh, I picked two of the literary sweetheart sisters because I think I, I prefer them even more to the um, others that are not glittery. Their poses are really original, like they are definitely different than, than the others that you can see here. So these uh, sweetheart sisters, uh, especially the glittery sweetheart sisters, are like just an honorable mention. What can you do? If it's a top 10, then you just have 10 ponies to put on and I already cheated, so... Let's go to my number one. If you have watched like my videos for a longer time, then maybe you already know what my favorite pony is. Or you are following me on, on Instagram and you have seen some of my posts or whatever. This is my favorite pony. It will always be, it was always my favorite pony. It is half note from the Rock and Beat ponies. Actually, for different reasons. Um, the first reason actually is that she was my favorite childhood pony. I always called her Rock Lady because I was really little when I had um, my little ponies. I was not able to read, I didn't know what her real name was. I didn't know that this was supposed to be like half note or I don't even know what she was called in German. Maybe let's put it in somewhere here. Um, but she had a guitar, like a rock, like an electric guitar, so she was like a rock star. And I think the ponies were also called rock star ponies uh, or rock and roll ponies. Rock and roll ponies, I think. And I played with her a lot. Um, I can remember also playing with her outside, like in the sand, like in the, in the sandbox. Um, I also have uh, one photo that shows us, us together really nice. This is not the one that I played with as a child. I don't have any of my childhood ponies anymore. But then again, she's also been in my collection, in my adult collection, for quite a long time now. I think for five years already. Because I needed to get her <laughs> when I started collecting. Well, I didn't start in 2015, I started even a little bit earlier. Maybe 2013 around I started. But she's not only in that list, like on my number one spot for that reason, but also because of her theme, her colors. The whole set, again, I could have included uh, the whole set. Here we've got Sweet Note with this super, super nice, uh, this super nice crimped hair and, and even, even more neon 
than uh, than half note. They've got tune full. Gosh, I love those colors. They are all themed around like you know rock musicians from the 80s because this pony um, was released in 1989. So right about when I was born, like I was born in 88. So that made sense, and I got her. Um, fresh out of the toy store. I got a lot of my ponies actually on flea market but, but I remember her like getting her when I was like behaving good at the dentist. <laughs> uh, that was like kind of the thing going on. I wasn't really good with going to dentists or going to go to the doctors and then my mom always told me yeah but, but then you can you can choose a toy from the toy store. Sometimes I chose dinosaurs and one time I really clearly see that, although I must have been like two years old or something, um, I definitely chose her. I Maybe mean, I was a little bit older, but so her colors, like I love neon colors, I love orange is one of my favorite colors, and I love this whole set. I could have also made this this, this list with the Rocket Beat Pony set and with the um, Tropical ponies and then some of the um, candy cane ponies or <laughs> something. But that would have been like a little bit of a boring thing to do. There you go. That's my top 10 list as of right now, as of 2020 December. And I'm pretty sure when I get other ponies, then this list might change. But my number one spot will never, never change. I actually also thought about doing another top 10 like of my complete toy collection or a complete vintage toy collection and um, I don't know if I would include more ponies in there. You maybe could have guessed what what's on the top of my list anyway or for, for that. Maybe I, I give a little bit more of a variety for, for, for this other top 10 list but for now I'm like look at these ponies isn't that like pure beauty cuteness overload and everything I love my little pony and I hope you love this video or at least you enjoyed it and had a little bit of fun yeah if you did then give it a thumbs up I'm really happy when I see that um, people like my videos because then I know that I'm doing a good thing here also when you give me comments it's really really sweet I'm really happy I know I'm, I'm such a small youtuber but I think um, we have like a little bit of very very small community um, down there in the comments because I recognize you right now when you write a comment and you've written several other comments and I'm so happy hey it's you again you always give me these really nice insights about the toys or you tell me what they're called in German or whatsoever you know I really I'm really um, thankful for having you down there as my subscribers and if you are not a subscriber yet then maybe you want to become one <laughs> because I'm planning more um, vintage toy collection thing videos and going out hunting for, for those toys on flea markets, thrift stores. I'm also a cosplayer so right now the cosplay content is a little bit not that uh, focused uh, here on the channel because I'm not doing many cosplays as of 2020 the year was like you no know, conventions. Well, uh, maybe I start again um, next year, so there might be also some cosplay content. So it's overall a channel about like all of my like nerdy interests. <laughs> so see you real soon. May the force be with you. Bye.